Hello, thank you. Um, I don't know if I, I know anyone from the crowd, but I was part of the very old community meetups. We were the guys, I'm, I'm Richard Gonzalez, I'm a Ruby on Rails developer. So I've been doing Ruby for two decades now, I guess. So we started with Ruby on Ruby on Rails, like 1.2 or 1.3, when nobody was even using it. So I'm part of the Philippine Ruby users group. I am also part of the Philippine hackers group. I don't know if anyone is a member of Pog, Prog. We have a Philippine hacker. It's not the, the bad hacker, the, the common notion. But when we say hacker, these are like uh, hardware hackers, software or DevOps. So I'm, I guess I'm part of the old group who started to initiate meetups and started organizing communities. We also started, uh, I don't know, the dead Philippine JS group, the very first Philippine JS group. We started it when, I don't know if you guys been to JSConf Asia. JSConf Asia is always held in Singapore and since there's a lot of um, uh, participants from the Philippines, we tried to bring it to Manila. So the second JS Conf Asia was held in Manila in, in Pasay. So I don't know if they're still doing it now, but it's been, it's been years. Um, I'm also a hybrid, hybrid mobile application developer. When, when I was, um, some people call us the full stack dev, but it's parang an labo. So the reason why, if you can see, it's a Ruby on Rails developer and a hybrid mobile app developer. So I'm also, I've been doing web applications and I'm also doing mobile applications. Uh, I was very fortunate enough that my former boss uh, gave me all the freedom to choose the technology that I wanted. Um, <clears throat> so I started with, um, PWA was like, it was a, a very common notion. Nobody was interested about it before, technically. So there were a lot of JS framework that came about Wala pa si Re I think na pumapalo na si React noon. But Angular was the very first. So I was in a verge of choosing between React and AngularJS, between Facebook and Google and whatever. Vue.js was not in the scene before. So um, it came to my analysis that I needed to use AngularJS and I needed to create a mobile application for my company. So since I'm doing it alone, I'm the Ruby on Rails developer, I'm the iOS and the Android developer, I'm taking care of the API and the back end, and if somebody lost their email, they come to me or fix their printer. So I'm the one-man guy who, whom they just go through. So they never had a question on the technology that I choose. So that's the reason why I chose Ionic. Ionic, I'm, I'm part of the Ionic I'm actually the one who initiated Ionic Philippines. I don't know if anybody here heard about Ionic. Ionic framework, they are now, you can now use React and Vue.js with it. So it's a hybrid mobile application development. Uh, I used Ionic way before uh, they even became prime time. So I was like, I don't know, three or four years ago, I guess. So, so they gave me the privilege to, to add the Philippine map and create the Ionic Philippines group. It's a very silent group. Not a lot of people are interested. I don't have the time to manage it as well. So we just talk and question and ask. Somebody supposed to spam on it. I'm also one of the founder of Bicol IT. I'm a Bicolano. I'm from Legaspi City. So anybody here from Legaspi who wanted to, to join the group, the Bicol IT group is like a group of Bicolano IT professionals who wanted to do some changes with, with our province. The reason why we're here is because there's no opportunity back there. So we wanted to educate the students especially and probably bring some jobs in there to, to, to change something in a little way. That's, that's why we have the, the Bicol IT organization. Um, I'm also one of the software engineers in Amplify Technologies Incorporated. We are into, now I'm a Ruby on Rails developer, mobile app, mobile app developer. I also did the PWA for our company. And now I'm doing bots, so I'm, I'm so deep into Node.js and um, bots with, um, 
right now I'm, I'm taking care of the Facebook interface, uh, Facebook Messenger, <clears throat> but we're branching into WhatsApp, um, Telegram, Line, and everything. So I guess you, that's, the, that's the whole story, my, my role in Amplify. But I guess you guys have seen John Wick. John Wick 3, you know, the bald guy, zero. Nung nilapitan siya, tapos binigyan siya ng piso na sobrang laki. Want you to kill John Wick. John Wick 3. Then Zero gave the, the girl uh, parang sushi, sashimi. <laughs> it's like, it's fugu. Fugu is like, I, I guess you guys are, since we're nerds, it's technically we know what fugu is. It's from Japan. You need to, to, to master how to, to even slice it. You need to be a master to even handle it. Because you need to have, if I'm not mistaken, I think I've read this uh, a few years ago, a few years ago, you need to have a license to actually create the dish, to even hold the fish and, and debone it and sli slice it. Why? Because it's poisonous. And if you make a very weird mistake, probably the bahing kang bigla at na slice mo, you slice through a specific vein, you might kill your, your client. So, fugu is, I haven't tasted it, I haven't been to Japan. We've been planning, but dumating yung coronavirus. So, fall back, get out. So, wag muna. But uh, from, from the reviews and from the YouTube videos that I've seen, they say it's delicious. But of course, it's, it's that fear of, baka mamatay ako pag kinain ko to. So, the Project Fugu is exactly just that. If you prepare it correctly, it's delicious. But take note of how you prepare it because you might just kill someone. Well, in the technology, of course, there are other stuff that are in, in store. It's like the security, the privacy of your, of, your, of your client, of your user, those are at stake. So Project Pugu is a, to, the, the, the main mission is to close the capabilities gap. The capabilities gap is, I guess all of you have been using your mobile phones. And if you've known PWA, I think merong ngayong difference na may kita. Like, there's a lot of things PWA can't do that the native apps can't do. Like, for example, um, I built the PWA for our company, and I was at the verge of giving up because the QR scanner just works on Android. No problem at all. Walang problema, swabbing, swabbing. You scan it, you got the code. Pero pag ginamit mo sa iOS, you have a problem. Because you will open a new window just to launch the, media, media, the user media, which is kind of ironic because if I could trace back, way back, See my see see si Apple ang nag may pasimula ng PWA. It was not Google, it was not anybody else. It was Apple who initiated the notion of PWA. I guess it was like during the iPhone 3 when you can download the website and put it as a home. Uh, I don't know kung nakinabot niyo pa yung iPhone 3, but you can actually install it on your phone. So it's running offline and you don't want to go back to Safari just to to open up the app or the website. Technically, it's a website. <clears throat> so, the the problem is the, the the gap. We see, we see that there are differences still with PWA. You wanted to close that. So, parang these guys in Project Fugu wanted to realize that you don't need to be an iOS developer. You don't need to be an Android developer because all of the features that you're looking for that you can build with Xcode and with Android uh, Studio are here now on the web. That's, that's the gap that they wanted to bridge. Example, um, the contact picker. Say for example, you created an app and you wanted to get all of the contact list from, from your user's device, like what WhatsApp and Line and other communication apps do. It actually collects all of the contacts in your, in your phone and you will see na may kita niya na, okay, si Dencio, nasa line na pala. You can connect with him now. Or if you're doing, ano pa ba yung isa, yung Violet, Viber? The same thing, the same process. You can do that with PWA. 
You can't do that because walang access yung web <clears throat> sa contact list mo. So those are the gap. There's a lot of gap. Right now, uh, the last time I checked, which is a few days ago, I think there's more than 100, 100 items that Project Fugu is trying to reconsider. Now, they wanted to, to, to make the, the, the web um, uh, as near to what native uh, apps can do. So this is a cross-org program to bring the new powerful capabilities. This was initiated by Google, but Intel is also in the game, and Microsoft is also in the game. This is from the Project Chromium. So if you realize, now if you downloaded Microsoft Edge, if you go to the About, you will see that it's a Chromium project. So it's an open source project. You can actually go and build if you want it. You can contribute. So that's the reason why Microsoft is also in here. Intel is, so far, sila yung nakita kong pinaka-aggressive with this. If you go to YouTube, you can see the, 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 the advocate, the, the, the evangelist nila. He goes all around the world. Nakita ko sila sa Sydney, nasa China. He's been, he been proclaiming all of the things about Project Fugu and the capabilities that they're building. So it's a, it's a cross-org um, uh, uh, endeavor. So I just need to show this because this is part of the very uh, thing that FUGU stands for. So the capabilities, but the bottom line is we need to maintain the user security, privacy, trust, and the other core tenets of the web. Of course, it needs to be, uh, the, the UI should be good. If you want a material design with it, so be it. But it needs to be secure. The privacy of the user are in there, and it should be trusted. That's the reason why all of the PWAs are running on HTTPS. You can't actually, you can't actually install any PWA if it's not running on PWS, uh, HTTPS. Sorry. So that's the that's the whole thing that they wanted. They wanted to, br to bridge the gap between the native application features, bring it to the web, but preserve all of the security and the privacy and the trust from the users. So um, I don't know if you. If, you're a, if you love history, but I, it's been part of our history, but if you read about W3C and everything, you would, you would realize that they take a lot of time. It takes them a lot of time to even publish the CSS and everything. Uh, even Angular, uh, Google has their own way of doing it, and if you go to React, even in the mind. But in terms of of launching uh, these new capabilities, um, the Fugu group follows this design and how they need to be implemented. One is to identify the need. The first step is actually comes from us, from developers. Let's say, for example, nakita mo sa native app and and you wanted it to be part of the PWA system. Take a look at the list. Maybe it's already there. Maybe the the guys are working on it. If it's not there, you can create your own feature request. So any one of you, if you have a, a feature that you wanted in the web that you can see on, the, on, on native apps, you can make a request for it. So technically, they need to identify the need. Of course, you need to, 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 to fill out a lot of, well, not really a lot of stuff. It's less like a couple of forms just to essentially give them the, the idea of what you really wanted. Ganun lang. And they will write an explainer. An explainer is like the, 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 working, um, the working document for, for, your, for, for, the, for the need that you identified. So they will be passing it on. So take note that Project Fugu is like a lot of companies are in it and a lot of freelancers, a lot of developers are also contributing to it. They will publish the explainer and everybody will get to to join in and discuss it and probably revise it. And they will solicit the feedback from the users or whoever are developing within the writing, the explainer, and soliciting feedback. The, the code already happens here. Okay, so they will be discussing how do we do that in the code? How do we get the, the, the hardware specs for it? Or if, if we need to dig deeper in the CPU, how do we do that? So they start creating codes for it during the writing, the explainer, and soliciting feedback. So they just go on iterating until they have a formal specification. A formal specification is now, it's like um, open beta. 
So, nandun na siya. So, may kita niyo, there's an origin trial. You need to, if you wanted to use it, if you wanted to use the capability, you need to file an origin trial. So, they will give you a token. You put it on your website just to tell um, Chromium. Chrome, you can either download Canary if you wanted, because some of the of the new capabilities only works on Edge, on Canary, or on Dev browsers. So take note, I guess right now, the latest Chrome version that everybody uses is 80, 82. But it's way ahead now. Si Canary, I think, nasa 83, 84 na. So they might have been doing all of these specs on 84, 85. So before you wanted to try it, you need to download the Canary version and uh, file an origin trial for you to use the capability. That's actually trying to tell the browser that you knowingly are using this. So walang parang mistake na, oops, bigla akong nagamit eh. Yung parang biglang napindot. No, you need to do it. It, need to be, it needs to be loaded on your site. Then, if everybody's amended with it, um, how does the origin trial work? Right now, there are, may nag origin trial one na, may nag origin trial two. So, kung minsan may mga nakukuha pa rin silang feedback during the origin trials. And what they do actually is, um, I'll show you later. What, what they do is, um, pag nag-file ka ng, ng origin trial, they, there's an expiry. I think one month lang yata binibigay. Eh. So after one month, you've been using the capabilities. Before you can ask for another token, you need to provide a feedback. So kung ano yung nagawa mo, or ano yung, kapab ano yung, ano yung may mali ba sa design, etc. You, you need to give feedback. Now if everything's good, they ship it out. Everybody uses it. It's, it will be on Chrome. It will be on Microsoft Edge. Hopefully, Safari will join in. And Sana. This is the origin trials. It allows devs to try out the new features to give feedback, uh, usability, practicality, and effectiveness to, to that specific feature. Now, there's also another thing. You can also use flags. So on, on, the, on the address, you just type chrome, column number forward slash flags. Um, I don't know if you've seen that, that interface before, but there's like a long list of all of the things that you need to enable. May be sure that you know what you're doing. So just look for the enable experimental web platform features, and it will be it. So some of the some of the new capabilities are already shipped. All you needed to do was to enable it. Okay. So by default, it's disabled just to keep you safe because of the security issues. Right now, the capabilities in flight are these nine as of February 25, the last. Time I, I updated the presentation. In flight, meaning they're, they're working on it. It's almost done, but they're working on it. It's either, it's not done yet, it's there, but it's not there yet. So, but, but they're working on it. So these are the top nines that are on the list. There's like, sabi ko na nga, there's a hundred of items in there, but this is the most things that a lot of people are waiting for. The badging API. Um, the badging API, well, the the hero is medyo kakaiba but actually the the badging api only works for desktop so say for example let me launch my So when, when I was preparing for, for the talk, I was actually creating an app to, to, to showcase what's, what's in there. So this is, this is the contact picker uh, page, but technically it, it doesn't work on the browser because you have contacts on your browser on your, on, your, on your machine, but they only made it to work on your phone. So later on I will demo to you how it works on your phones. But for, for badge, um, what happens is, say for example, I don't know if you've heard of Yuki, Yuki Kaze. It's, it's an anime, like it's, an, it's one of the non-mech anime, like jet fighters. 
fighting each other. Anyway, so um, this is a PWA. I, I created a PWA. I already installed it, and it's it's now here in my machine. If you can see, it's right here. all. So if I set the badge. Ayaw na. <laughs> Dali. Uninstall ko kaya. Tigas ka. Uninstall. So, yeah, that's one good thing about the, the install. It's already launched. I think if, I don't know if somebody discussed this already. I'm not covering it. Na discuss na? Ah, okay. Yun, yung nakita nyong lumabas na install kanina. Yung dun sa gilid, may makikita kayo dun na install tapos magko-collapse siya into a plus sign. That means if you see that, that means the, the site that you're visiting is a PWA. So you can click it and it will ask if you wanted to install it and you can install it on your desktop. So it should be there now. So actually, I am also tasked to create the dashboard of one of our applications. So it will be a PWA installable for both Microsoft and, and iOS. Unfortunately, it's, it's not badging up. Set badge. Fail. Oh, anyway, so let's see if from my presentation is, I have other. No, the Yukikaze is the only, it's the only demo that I have, but I think they still have one right here. So if you wanted a copy of the presentation, I already gave it to this good guy. You can, you can grab it. And what I always do is I put notes on the presentation so you can follow along with whatever reference I use. So let me just turn it up. I mean, come on. When, whenever you go to a website and it asks you for, would you like to, to accept notifications from this website, who amongst you clicked yes or allow? Because it's annoying. Technically, it's annoying. I'm a developer. I wanted to use it, but I don't think anybody would. So this is the reason why they wanted to use badging. So silently, pumipitik na lang doon na mayroong isa. Or yung kung kailangan mo mag-update, may lalabas one, two. So that's more subtle way of informing your user that there's an update for this app and you need to open it. Unlike flashing, if you're working on something, nag-code ka, bigla na lang nag-flash yung notification. I would usually turn them off, but yeah. So... Sandali, hanapin natin. Eto, may demo si, ano. Um, tama ba? Uh, I think I'll also have this installed. Let's see if this works. So, yun yung fugu sa ilalim. Change na nila naman yung code. Well, yeah, yung ginawa, yung it works with Pugu. Kasi, dung ginawa ko, may fallback ako eh for Origin 1 and Origin 2. Uh, anip. Andali, anapin natin. Saan na ba yun? Session na kayo ng terminal ko. Medyo ako lang nakakaintindi niya kung minsan. So, <laughs> sa tab 1, uh, tab Yan. Nakaset experimental pa siya eh. So either they updated it now in two days time. Because I was testing this in last two days. It worked. I said, okay, I'm done. But it's not working. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how the badging works. Whatever updates it is. Yun yung, yun yung problema. Actually dito. So, when you're working with the new capabilities, you need to be aware that this changes without you being informed. So, if it doesn't work, make sure na make sure na uh, ma check mo yung updates. Um, Sana ba tayo? 
Ayun. So, eto na si Fugu. So, if you clear, that's how easy it is. Just set the badge and clear the badge. Technically, very, very easy. But it's, there's a lot of use case for it. Technically, that's the only use case that I could think of. I hate notifications. Just give me all of those badges and that's it. Good to go with that. So, yeah, that's the badging. The, the Contacts API right now is also in, in flight. And hopefully my other demo works. Kasi ginawan ko na rin to. <laughs> Yuki. Um, it, it needs to be running on, it needs to be installed. Okay. Oh, sorry. The contacts only works on, 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 on your mobile app, on your mobile device. Um, I don't know how you can connect this, but I had it on my phone. Pretty by you. So this one, so I already installed it on my device. So I'll just allow it. So if you pick a contact, chose up your contact list. So just to be sure, this this is the PWA. So I can launch it. And if you pick the pick contact, it launches your contact list. Um, ang maganda nito, walang hold si PWA dito. Okay, take note that your PWA does it can't even interact with this, with this interface. That's the reason why they wanted to preserve the security and the privacy of the user. Let's say, for example, you have an app. Tapos pag launch ng, uh, ng contact picker, kinuha mo lahat ng contacts. So ayaw nila ng ganun. What will happen is you will only give what you authorize it to give. Say, for example, you can pick only the email addresses, or you can include the phone, or only the phone without the email addresses, and you can select one and click done. It takes some time to, 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 to load, but it should. Come on, baby. <laughs> yun ang problema. Again, another problem. But uh, as soon as, yun, lumabas na. Yun. Okay, that's the, that's the contact that I picked. So from here, you can either call the person. You can call it from the contact list. So once you select, you can select one contact or you can select multiple contacts. So it, it will be an array. So it's like an array of hash. So that's how the contact picker works. They embedded the security in it that um, the PWA doesn't have access to it. They just need to wait for the return. Para sa akin, it's good. Kasi if you give all of the control to your PWA, I, I don't know what other people can do with your contact list. Take note, if, if 50 people downloaded your app and suddenly you get like 10,000 contacts, you're good to go, di ba? So, um, yun yung maganda sa kanya. For me, uh, I think this is this is a really good feature. I've been waiting for this as well, because this a lot this has a lot of uh, implications for my app. Like for example, we created an app, and you earn like additional points if you invite people. The only the safest way to invite people is to launch your contact list, and whoever can you refer it to then to somebody whom you already know. So that's the best solution that I could get. But you can. I will only get whatever you give me, okay? So the referral programs, um, contact information and everything. So that's the contact picker API. It only works on the phone right now. I don't know if they're considering of launching it for the dev app, for the mobile apps, uh, for the desktop apps, but so far for, for, for my end, it's, it's a good to go in uh, the uh, future. Um, Another one is the get installed related apps. I hope you can you can see. But the main the main reason why they created this get installed related app is okay, you wanted to create a PWA, but you already have an Android team. Yung Android team mo gumawa na ng Android app. Eh. Yung iOS team mo gumawa na rin ng iOS app. 
At ikaw, gumawa ka rin ng PWA, ang yaman nyo. So, what you wanted is to communicate with those native apps. You can, for the reason is, the reason probably is to launch a better uh, experience. I mean, let's, let's be honest. PWA is there, but it's not really there yet. It's, it's getting there, but not really there yet. If you compare it to the native app and PWA, I'd put all my money on the native app. But PWA is still getting there as well. So we don't want it to, to take away the, the, the feature na you can give a better, better experience for your user. Kung meron siyang Android app na naka-install, pwede mo i-launch. Pwede mo yun i-launch. Um, I already downloaded a demo on my phone. Actually, the Get Installed demo app, I already installed it here. And, um, oops, somebody. If you, again. So, we, we would usually have, uh, lagi nyo may kita sa, sa, sa Fugu group, lagi siyang may, may glitch na, na website. But technically what happens is, um, if you visit the PWA, you can, you can use the Get Install Related Apps API, and it will detect if, if the Android app or the iOS app inst is installed on your phone already. Why? Because maybe there's a better experience on the phone, on the native app, then launch it, it's, which is better. Or you can either communicate by sending data to and fro from the, from the PWA to the native app. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen, if you guys have used AutoCAD before. Way back, if you've used AutoCAD, you need to install it from a lot of CDs. And recently, AutoCAD, using WebAssembly, migrated their AutoCAD system to a web interface. So now the, 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 the problem is, what if you wanted to open the file from your system, and you wanted to save the file on your system? That's where the native file system API comes in. Um, there's actually a, a very cool demo uh, that they created. Yan, parang text editor. So actually, when, when I was watching the Google I.O., they were saying, I can't wait that the VS Code can be launched in the browser, and you can do everything on the browser already. That can actually happen. Because now with the file system API, you have access to your system files. And that's, that breaks everything. So, pwede mo siyang isave, like say, create a file, then save it. Then you can open, you can open another file from your system. Technically that easy. So that's the file system API in the works. So it's either um, a lot of things. You can use it for IDE, for co, um, uh, code, code body. Paano ba yun? Kung nasa Brazil yung... Kasi before, when I was, uh, when I was pair programming, I don't know if it's still a thing, the pair programming thing, but way before when I was working for a US company and I was the only Filipino developer and all of the developers are Brazilians, we, like, we, we Skype and we talk about what he's doing on his screen and I talk about what I'm doing on my screen, which is very, very tedious. So if this thing could have been available, I guess the, the main options is there. So a lot of people are anticipating this feature. A lot of companies are actually anticipating this feature. So almost done. So you can explore it if, if on one of your projects you wanted to, to, to use that kind of feature. The shape detection API, I think there's something wrong with, with this API right now because I can't, I can't seem to, to use it. So yeah, again, the, the, the trouble of using uh, a Fugu new capability.
technically the new shape API is, I don't know if you guys create, ever created a, a QR scanner for the web. If you, well, if you don't, and if you did, I know it's a bunch of JS library that you can download from the net. Go to github.com and look for the highly starred QR code JS library and download it on your, on, your, on your app and launch it, it works. That's what they wanted. You don't need to download those QR libraries anymore. That's the shape detection API. Aside from that, they went on more aggressive. They wanted to go with the face detection API as well. That's part of the shape detection, the face detection API, which is really aggressive. If you would ask me, I would just say, na, can you just you know, launch the QR API in the lang muna? and create a new uh, capability for the face detection API because sobrang hirap ng face detection. Um, my, my, my girlfriend worked before with um, RCPI and the problem that they had before is whenever an, an African tries to withdraw money from them, they need to secure a lot of IDs because technically lahat sila magkakamukha. Uh, even 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 some of the Chinese, some of them really you really need to to get a lot of of documents because mo sa iba eh. So with the with the shape detection, I guess. So I, it's it's good, I guess. Personally, if if you would ask me, there's a lot of um, um, face detection technology like what uh, iOS and Android is doing right now. Um, I have an Android and iharap ko lang sa mukha ko, it opens up my screen. I have an iOS, harap ko lang sa mukha ko, it opens up my screen. But those are embedded on chips. This one, they wanted to put it on the web. Can you imagine how crazy they are? I don't know, but I think it's, uh, it's a good feat if they can really launch it. I can't show you a demo because I've been working on it for a couple of days. I can't use anything. I think there's something wrong with the, with the API right now, so we could probably wait. Another feature of this is OCR. Can you imagine? May scanner pa kayo noon, di ba? Yung OCR scanner. Tapos ipapasok mo yung papel, then i-detect niya yung text doon. With this one, hindi na. All you needed is your web app, mobile web app. Itapat mo doon sa mga document mo na gusto mong basahin. It will OCR that thing. But it's like they're going against a lot of companies who've been building this kind of uh, technologies. So really, really, um, napaka aggressive, aggressive, aggressive na, na approach. That's the, the shape detection API. Unfortunately, I don't really have a, a sample for this. But technically, it, 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 it scans QR codes. Before, when I think, gumamit ako ng library. To do the QR. The Wake Lock API, there's, there's a demo for the Wake Lock API, but what will happen is um, it will uh, preserve your screen. Like, for example, ang lagi nilang din demo sa, sa presentation is yung, yung DVD na nagwa bounce. That means your screen is asleep or your system is asleep. Now, what if you wanted to process something? Um, my wife loves to cook, so she has a lot of recipe, recipe apps that she follows. Now imagine if your phone closes every five minutes or 30 seconds. Tapos punong puno na ng sebo yung kamay mo, pakipindot nga! So it's a hassle, but for the wake lock, you can lock the screen na hindi siya mag screen save. That's the main feature, that's how easy it is. Right now there's a screen lock, there's also a system lock, but they're working on the system lock. There are two options, the screen lock and the system lock. The system lock is going deeper into the CPU. This one is just for the screen. So that's the, yun yung nakikita kong feature. Kasi pag nagbe-bake ka, tapos nanonood ako ng Netflix, tapos sisig, ay, nag-lock yung screen. Ayoko mag-ugas ng kamay. Pakipindot. Uh, if you have a lock screen, problem solved. The content indexing API is technically for the, 
for the offline services. So um, I think this is one of the best features of the PWA because of the service worker. Now the service worker is, um, what the contact indexing API does is, if you have a PWA, we, aside from the, the manifest, we also have the service worker. You can launch the service worker. What you can do is you can actually pick which content you wanted to serve offline. So for example, you already created items. Alimbawa, abang libre pa yung Wi-Fi, download na. Tapos pag offline, pwede kang magbasa ng article. You can do that as well with, with this one. So that's technically what they, what they wanted. With the native apps, ganun eh. So you download the apps, the, the, the content. If you go offline, you can still open it and read it. So we wanted to bridge that gap as well with PWA and the native. And that's the contact indexing. Um, when it comes to service worker, I guess it would take a whole day to discuss. But if somebody would discuss it to you guys so you understand what the service worker does, it would be awesome. But that's touching the service worker as well. The periodic background sync is, um, if you're using Facebook, with your native app, then bigla na lang nag -re refresh tapos may dumadagdag na mga, mga content. If you're on Twitter, it suddenly just adds up content or tweets on it. We also wanted to do that. Um, with the PWA, you can actually do a background sync and get data, get information. You can actually cherry pick the information and launch it, load it, without the guys, with, without the user even knowing that you're, you're syncing. Those, those information, getting information from your server and, uh, and, and, and exposing it to the user. Um, application says, if you guys are developing stocks, uh, stock exchange uh, tracking, or, or, or if you're a trader and you wanted to create your own mobile app or, or PWA, while you're looking at it, it's been fetching information from different um, uh, uh, data uh, stores and, and launch it load it while it's just, you don't need to refresh or something. That's the periodic background sync API. Tapos, dumating yung mga two-step two authentication, then the OTPs. What's annoying is if bibili ka sa Lazada, tapos um, lalabas yung OTP, tapos magte-text, di ba? Bubuksan mo yung message mo, uh, 461262, 461262, and 461262. Open na naman. So, it's annoying. One, it's because people realize that there should be an easier way to do this. The easier way is the SMS receiver. When you, when you launch the, the app, if, if an OTP comes in, and if you requested for an OTP, you will see it. It, it, it will even supply the information to the OTP. Um, tama ba? Kasi ang iba dito yung settings sa uh, US na demo uh, here. So, lalabas yung, lalabas yun, yun, lalabas. But it's not intrus uh, intrusive na it actually dig Na, nakialam siya sa messages mo. No. Hindi siya nakialam sa messages mo. Uh, I know for a fact because I was following this because I have a very specific application for this. One is if your app has a two-stage authentication that you wanted to send an OTP to the user. So you don't want your user to open up their messages. Then punch in the OTP again. It will load dun sa ibabaw. So may kita niya. Um, ang maganda kay... Kay, kay iOS at kay, kay Mac is because yung may messages kasi pag nag-text sa'yo sa gilid, copy na lang, paste, tapos. But if you're on mobile, sobrang hassle. So, nandun ako sa stage na pag nagbabayad ng bills, daming OTP na pumapasok. Asa na ba na-punch mo yung OTP na ginamit mo kanina, etc. So, hassle. There's an easier way. This is their solution and I think this is really one good project. I'm personally following this. So if you guys have a specific feature or application in mind, um, 
try to follow this project. It might be open soon. Because they've been discussing this since last year. Last year pato. So hopefully they launch it soon. So those are the things that they're working on. And these are the things that they already shipped. Yung na launch na. Available na sa Chrome, which is a proof of the Fugu project actually creating something. The async clip word API. Now, if you're an old developer like me, I think nandun pa rin sa'yo na if ever you wanted to copy something to the clipboard, you need to create a flash. Alam niyo yung flash? Sino pa may alam ng flash na Adobe Flash? Kasi yung Adobe Flash noon, siya lang ang capable na mag-interact sa clipboard. Na pag may kinakopy ka, halimbawa, di ba sa GitHub or sa GitLab, kukunin mo yung siya, tapos i-deploy mo or something. So, dati noon ang implementation namin, ano pa yun? Uh, Adobe Flash pa yun. Na pag clinic, kung ano man yung nandun sa, in, sa, la, sa ID na yon, ilalagay ko sa clipboard. Tapos copy-paste, control v ka na lang kung saan. Ngayon, kaya na pala dito, hindi ko alam to eh. <laughs> Meron na pala. But now they made things uh, even further, you can actually copy a PNG. So you can actually copy an image. Um, <clears throat> Tingnan natin to. Nagulat ako nito eh. Salamat sa pagpapresent sa akin ng Fugu. May mga natutunan akong bago. Yun lang yung issue namin noon eh. Gagawa pa ba ako ng, ano, ng, ng flash na, na maliit para lang i-copy yung clipboard? They, they prepared a very simple demo, but here's how it works. So from the, from the web, you can either install it. Tapos may kita nyo, may, mayroong ibang um, nasa address bar may nakalagay na parang desktop tapos may maliit na. So that's mean, meaning to say you can either install it on your desktop or your phone. So copy the Chrome logo. Image copied. Punta tayo dito kay dito. Tapos command V. Yan. So you can copy images. You can copy an image from uh, a browser or somewhere else. If it's a PWA, of course. So, pwede yun. There's, uh, actually, nung nakita ko siya, nagulat ako dun sa image, pero I'm more interested on the text. <laughs> but they also have a, a, a demo here, how it works, the async clipboard API. So bago pa nangyari yung ano, bago pa nangyari yung image, tapos na pala yung text, medyo behind na. But that's this is how it works. It's a short uh, short demo from them. Yeah, laging lalabas yan. You need to allow it. So if ever it's accessing something, you need to allow it. Hmm, very easy. Hindi mo na kailangan ng flash. Hey. Um, the WebShare API, this is the one, um, magiging prank ako ah. The WebShare API is a, is a really good way of, of sharing things because um, you can actually launch. Um, I don't know if you've used Santa Tracker before. Nung Pasko, tinatrack namin sa iPhone yun eh, kung nasaan na si Santa. Nandun na sa Finland, nandun na sa, sa Asia and everything. Um, eto. So, in, in the mobile, mobile, mobile phone, iba yung lalabas dyan. It's actually a, a, sheet, of, a sheet of options that you can use. Pinalitan na pala nila. But, let's open up the, the demo. Yung ganito. Ito yung lalabas. I, I, I personally created this, but to, to tell you the, the real, real world application and the comparison between native, 
because what we were doing is it we were like um, the, the the users can um, share a specific article that we provided and share it with their Facebook, Twitter, um, IG. The yung tatlo lang mo na Twitter, Facebook, and IG. If if you're using it in a native app, you can post it directly. You can post directly to Facebook, tweet directly to Twitter, post it on on on, on IG. But with the web share, lalabas tung mga options na to. Sometimes you have to dig deeper. You have to look for the Facebook or the Twitter app for you to actually use it. But from for from my perspective, it's already enough. Well, one. The, the good and the bad is kailangan ng human interaction. Again, going back to the capabilities na, na sinasabi ni Project Fugu, we need it to be secure, we need it to be private, and we need trust. If you open the web share API, you don't want to create a web share feature na, na pag right click nyo dun sa isang article, bigla na nang blinast sa mga social media mo. No. It can only happen if you explicitly share it with them. Ganun lang siya. So you can also use it now. I used it with our mobile app. Unfortunately, we already turned off the API for the mobile app because uh, tinututukan natin namin ngayon yung bot. That's the web share API. Ganun lang siya kasimple. Um, usually what we do is... Um, if you're sharing it on mobile, you need to please take note that the the URL for IG and Facebook and Twitter, if you're working on mobile, are different. Iba po yung web URL and iba yung mobile URL. So if you are, what I needed to do was to detect if the user is using a mobile phone and use the web URL, uh, the mobile URL. If you're using the, the desktop, then you can use the the web URL exclusively. Yun lang yung kabiat niya. Kasi kung minsan, pag ni, iba, yung nila, iba yung lumalabas kay Facebook and iba yung lumalabas kay Twitter, depending on the URL that you use. Um, yung, yung web share target, yung web share target is, pwede mong i-share doon sa, sa other app. So let's say, for example, you created a sharing app, um, pumunta ka sa isang app or may photo ka sa phone mo and you want to share it directly to that specific app, you can do that now as well. There's a shared target na, na path. You need to create a shared target path for you to actually parang mag accept ka lang ng incoming data from there. That's also available now. So the, the, this API, the web share API, the web share target API, the, the asynchronous uh, clipboard API are already being used now on, on desktops, on, on Chrome and on Microsoft Edge. So what do we do next? If, if you're interested on the projects, you can check the API tracker. If you have a, a feature on your mind that you wanted to use for your company, for your personal project or whatever it is that you see, um, you can file a feature request. Also, you can use the API from your end, and you can provide feedback. You know, giving feedback is the least that we could do um, to to the organization, to the to the project itself. I've listed a lot of links and sources uh, on the on the presentation for for your references, and that's it. Tama, un time pa naman ako na. In. So if you have questions, ganun siya. Medyo so, sobrang ambitious. If you ask me, they're really ambitious. That's just the tip of the iceberg. If you go to YouTube and watch yung mga Intel guys, sobrang Bluetooth na ang pinag nila. Bluetooth, um, ports, LTP ports, uh, the BLEs, NFCs, yung near-field communication, they're working on that, uh, gyroscope, accelerometer, lahat na siguro na, hindi ko lang nilagay kasi baka malunod tayo sa sobrang dami, but there's really a lot, 
uh, especially with the Intel guys, um, sobrang hype sila pagdating sa sa ganong ano, ganong mga features. Yun, any questions or violent reactions? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hi. Uh, uh, so, um, great presentation, by the way. So, Thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if, uh, as of the moment, this is just in the like experimental phase, right? So, yeah. uh, when are we looking into um, uh, seeing this? to be deployed in actual production project? Do we have some sort of timeline yeah, um, available? That's yeah. actually what I'll be showing yeah. you now. <laughs> that's actually the timeline. Okay. So yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na these are all of the things that's on the list. That's a lot. That's really a lot. And very, very ambitious. Yung mga naka-italics, parang hindi pa nila consider, hindi pa nila pinag-aaralan. But those are on the top that has a green on it. It's those are the things that are that are in flight that they're working on, and they have targets as well. So I think, yeah, right now we are on Chrome Chromium 80. The yeah Chromium 80. So yung mga naka green jan that's already in there. So we get a new may green. It's a Fugu. May nakalagay pa doon na Fugu project. Um, yung may mga check that are on. The, those are the things that are already launched. Ah, uh, so they're ready, production capable. Already. Yeah, yeah. Okay. These these are already shipped. Um, I did not discuss about the desktop PWAs. Those are the yung pagkinik mo doon sa taas. Yung dinay mo kaniya yung yung project uh, Yuki Kase. Um, the contacts API, makita mo may check na dyan. The web share target version 2, um, may check na rin dyan. So, uh, nand nandun siya. Uh, sa presentation ko rin yung link if you wanted to track the API and uh, see all of the things that they're working on. So, the, the plan is up until the end of, the end of this year. So, until Chrome 86. And we are on Chrome 80 by stable. I am using Canary, which is 82. Mm -hmm. Yung Canary, yun yung, yun yung orange na, na, na kulay na browser. If you're into Edge, meron ting Canary Edge, meron ting Dev Edge. But of course, I hope you know what you're doing if you're using this. Sometimes it will, it will freeze, it will, it will not work. Because it's in development stage. Pa lang siya. So that's the yung ano, yung timeline. Natin. As to, can they really hit it on the mark? Sometimes they might not. Sometimes they won't. They might be accepting uh, a quota for the number of feedbacks they get before they judge na, OK, this is good for prime time. Let's launch it. Ganun. OK. Thank you. Ano nung boss namin na Amerikano dati, mayroong football eh. Pag hindi ka tumingala, babatohin ka ng football eh. Okay. My question is about the UI aspect of PWAs. Inabot mo ba yung Audio Galaxy na music player bat dati? Inabot mo ba yan? Do you remember that? Ano, parang yung, ano ba yun? Yung MP3 player ba yun, sir? Yung Lama? Yeah. yeah. If you remember, when you downloaded, when you downloaded that, that mm -hmm. app on your desktop, what happens is it, it uh, creates the interface na exactong size na mukha talaga siyang, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Ganun lang siya kaliit. And so regardless of whatever screen size you had, ganun talaga ganun siya kaliit. Talaga siya. With PWAs, when you, since you're designing for mobile, mm -hmm. and then you open it, let's say, on a desktop or a laptop, mm -hmm. does the UI, you know, adapt? Or um, it's fixed like parang Audio Galaxy? Usually what, 
Oh, my, my personal approach, my professional approach on that is, um, sa Ionic kasi, I don't know with React, and um, I would give you regards. May mga designers dito, I know. Uh, members ng PWDO, and the CSS guys. Um, iba-iba kasi, sir. Usually what I do is, just to be on the safe side, I use a grid layout. Mayroong ibang mobile app designer who doesn't use a grid layout. They just use uh, uh, pag-list, list lang siya. So kung ano yung size sa uh, maliit na phone, mag expand lang yun to the size sa malaking phone. But when you launch it to a desktop view, it actually fails. It looks bad because a, a long list on a desktop interface is quite annoying. So you need to settle down to a grid. So what I would usually do is, like for the sample that I be, for the project that I'll be working on, I, I did some UI and UX designs already. It will be on a grid. So para kahit na sa phone view siya, I just need to eliminate some, some materials or some assets out of it. But if you're on the mobile view, it will expand as well. Um, as to the approach, it depends on the developer. So, but uh, by, by notion, pag sinabi namin mobile app developer, these are technically just using mobile phones. Now, when we say desktop developers, these are the different breeds. So, if you wanted to be conversant to, to those two discipline, uh, it's the grid that I would, I would say the solution is. So, implementation-wise, it depends on, on the people working on it. But PWA is generic. Um, there's a lot of design interfaces in there. Material design, um, anti, um, pa yung mga dark mode, and et cetera. So there's really a lot. So that depends on the design team. Some design team create their own interface. If they really have a very good design team, they really create their own. So sila nagdidikta how it, how it works. So the framework, the P, yung, or kumbaga, yung core, which is the PWA, it's just like parang stepping stone lang. Whatever builds on top of it is in the control of the develop, developers and the designers themselves. Thank you. Okie dokie. Any more questions? Anna? Ikaw, may question ka, sir? <laughs> okay. Um, salamat. Thank you. It's it's been a while talking in front of wala yung mga matatandang ka, ka ko dati. But anyway, thank you for having me tonight.